so these are now just some considerations that you'd make um, in particular for AFL rehab. So the top one, you're really looking at some, so this is after they've done, you know, a little bit of grappling um, and a little bit of um, work with uh, the strength and conditioning coach or with uh, one of the physios one-on-one. -on -one. And they're ready for just combining that with, you know, having to receive a ball, having to sort of fend off someone at the start and then getting a bit of a bag bump. Yeah. Again, if they're concerned with this, they shouldn't keep progressing on. Yes. So with the bottom drill, it's um, they're more practicing an entry into the forward 50. And you can this can be a good one as a way to get people in because it's not congested. Mm. You can have some contact, but you don't necessarily have to. Like we used to put them in a yellow, in a fluoro hat. Yep. Um, but like, see, that player at the end, there was minimal contact except yeah. for that player at the end. Yep. And so you could have them in there and just having, you know, them receive a ball, run through the flow of play and then not actually get contacted. But in their head, they might perceive that they might. Yes. So it's much more controlled. It's much more controlled. Yeah. Similar with these sorts of drills. So this is a nice wide open ground drill where um, there doesn't necessarily need to be contact. And in this one, there isn't. You're more looking at trying to transition the ball from the back line to the forward line. They're working on um, you know, different plays and how they mm. specifically want to do that, um, which is a nice, good, it's a good one to get them involved yeah. without that worry of them getting some head yeah. contact. And at this point, they're starting to really itch to get back out there. Yeah. So it's a really nice way for them to complete the rehab, final rehab stage. Exactly. Yeah. And a nice way for them to feel like they're part of the team again. They've yeah. spent, you know, a while potentially at this point, you know, it obviously varies player to player, mm. running around in circles around the boundary, um, you know, doing all these various rehab drills that mm. we give them. And it's nice to give them something. Yeah. Um, whereas the bottom one, you're then looking at some really close contested work. They're working more on actually being able to get the ball um, out of a, a really tight situation. And um, yeah, you're looking then at stoppage areas and that yep. sort of thing rather than um, a smooth free flowing play. So that's the one of the last things you'd yep. add in. And the smaller that gets, so that's still um, a little bit wider, the mm -hmm. smaller that gets, the harder it'll be because the contact can come pretty thick and fast. And are you putting that in the um, non-contact, incidental contact drills or is no, this that's now contact? Now contact. Yeah. yeah. So the top one, you can still put them in the hat. I probably, I've never had a coach that'll let me yeah. put someone in a hat in that. Yep. And I wouldn't. It's too hard. It's too hard. Yeah. Because um, the contact, by the time the player that's actually, say, either received the ball or um, if they're going to tackle someone realises that they're in a hat, it can almost be too late. Yep. And it's not fair on the other players either. No, that's right. So sometimes you might get them just watching um, and feeding the ball in so yep. that then they're still a part of it. And they're also still having to deal with the visual demands of it as well as getting out of the way of it without having to fear getting hit. That's right. And it's also following the cognitive the load of actually watching the play and where people are moving. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Um, so this is another one where um, it's a smaller drill. You've got a few handballs fed through first. Uh, handball games are often the ones that are in tighter um, and they're the ones that you would add in like once they're cleared to go back mm -hmm. to contact. Because if you add them in earlier, they're generally smaller drills, they're in tight and there's more incidental contact like we said before. Yeah. Um, and the bottom one was about that player that I said earlier who had, he never liked those drills pre-concussion. And so that's one of those situations where the vestibular system was probably not operating at an optimal level in general. Mm -hmm. And so um, unless they tell you something like that, though, you're not going to notice. Yeah. And it was just a mild dizziness. He just didn't knew he didn't like it. It wasn't, you know, giving him any specific uh, or prolonged symptoms mm -hmm. or anything. But that's definitely a way to actually start challenging them a little bit more sometimes, just bringing the walls in a little bit. So yeah. instead of doing it on an open field, trying to do it in a gym space. Confined. Yeah.